I'm John Howard Coble, and I represent the 6th District of North Carolina. Uh, I was elected in 1984. And the schools I attended back home, uh, I, I attended the public schools of Guilford County, Appalachian State University, Guilford College, and the University of North Carolina School of Law. And then I was at Guilford College when I withdrew from college and joined the Coast Guard. And then that was in 1952. In 1954, I was aboard the Coast Guard cutter Klamath, and we sailed in Korean waters, but I was never ashore in Korea. So what people did say when the Korean War broke out? What did people say about it? Where is it? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Most of the folks back home didn't, weren't familiar with Korea either. You, you may recall the President of the Republic of Korea spoke to the Joint Session of Congress recently. Oh, yeah. He's about it. Oh, it was... It was very moving, a very moving experience to have her here. And some people have referred to the Korean War as the Forgotten War. Not that day. Mm -hmm. When she spoke to us that day, the, the patriot, patriotic climate was alive and well. And Did she recognize each Korean War veterans congressman? She recognized the four of us. Uh, Sam Johnson from Texas, Texas, John Conyers from Michigan, right. Charles, Rangel. Charles Rangel from New York, yeah. and I. Oh. So you stood up? Well, I was watching it on TV. Oh. I didn't know they were going to do that, so I immediately went over there, uh -huh. and I visited with her, with her at a reception after she spoke. What did she say to you? Well, I just told her how pleased I was to have her here to speak to us. And she was appreciative for what we had done. And I explained to her that I was never ashore in Korea. I, said, I was afloat in those waters. And she seemed to understand that. So tell me about your experience in the Coast Guard. Well, I was what enlisted. What kind of uh, military training did you receive from there and how did it go? I was en enlisted in, uh, 19, in September of 1952 was dispatched immediately to Cape May, New Jersey, which was the recruit, recruit training center for the Coast Guard then and continues to be the recruit training center today, Cape May, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. After my graduation from there, I was assigned to Norfolk, Virginia, at the Coast Guard base in, in Berkeley, Virginia, a, a, a nearby uh, town just outside of Norfolk. Uh, after that, brief period there, I was sent to Groton, Connecticut for the Coast Guard training station there and enrolled in Yeoman and Storekeeper School there. And then upon graduation from that school, which was 16 weeks, I was transferred to Seattle, Washington, and the Coast Guard Cutter Klamath was home ported in Seattle, as was the Coast Guard Cutter Northwind. The Northwind is on, on the bulkhead just behind you. Uh, that's the icebreaker oh, yeah, that, was, that was based in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, upon completion of my four-year hitch, my four-year tour, uh, I was transferred to the re active reserve in Greensboro, the inactive reserve. When was that? This would have been 1956. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Coast Guard created a, a reserve unit in Greensboro, and started what was called a direct commission program. If you had served at least two years active duty and attained the rate of, of E-5 and passed the officer qualification test, you became eligible for a direct commission. And that, so that's what I did. And then I served about 17, 18 years, maybe 20 years, in the, re in the reserve. What was the whole mission of you? The mission was to obtain weather data, weather, weather information. And we would go out, we were in that area for a month, and then we were relieved by another Coast Guard cutter who was there for the same purpose. Do you remember it was the east sea or west side of it? I don't remember. How many were in the ship? 120. Uh, eight or nine officers and 90 enlisted personnel. And please tell me about the living condition inside of the ship. 
you know, not, young not, generations are very... Not that, not that pleasurable. Uh, Can you tell me the details? Where did you sleep? What did you eat? Oh, oh yeah, we had... Uh, well, we, on the climate, we, our d dog was Max, a, a boxer dog. And Max would went to sea with us each time we would depart for the ocean. Max would be aboard. We would hey, we'd have t t two and three deck uh, sleeping quarters, hammocks. Well, comparable to hammocks, and it would be. Uh, and I was fortunate; I, I, I would have had one one berth, one 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 rack, or one sack. Oh. Poor guys who had three three sacks on top. That would be not be good good sleeping. That's right. But you get used to it. What was your main sort of concern and focus in Congress? Well, before I came to the Congress, I was in the North Carolina legislature. And the go uh, uh, governor Holzhauser was the governor at the time. He appointed me to his cabinet mm -hmm. as secretary of, of the North Carolina Department of Revenue. And then uh, after that, I ran for Congress in 1984. And I've been here since then. Mm -hmm. What well, is your main sort of... Well, strike that I'll say one thing. I was, uh, I was on active duty with the Coast Guard after my tour with the Department of Revenue. And I served a year in Washington, in fact, uh, during that time. And then after that, I ran for Congress. Mm -hmm. This year is the 60th anniversary of the U.S.-Korea alliance and the armistice. There is no war lasting 60 years after an official ceasefire in the 20th century. What do you think about that? Uh, it would be good to have a peace treaty, I think. Do you think U.S. Congress will support that? I don't know. What, what fair, fair question, but uh, I don't know how. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Congress didn't pass it. What is the importance of U.S.-Korea alliance of world policy and especially about Asia right now? Oh, very important. I think Korea, as I said, it, 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 in my opinion, it is not the forgotten war. There are many Americans who appreciate the, the relationship that we enjoy with the, with the Republic of Korea. And I told the president that when I, when I talked to her. Why do you think that it's been called forgotten? I don't know. I, I guess maybe because it, it, it doesn't attract the uh, information, obviously, as, as the Vietnam War did. It's farther removed chronologically. That may be the reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could you tell me about the legacy of the Korean War and the Korean War veterans? Well, I'm, just, I'm proud to be a Korean War veteran and uh, appreciate what you and your colleagues are doing to that end. Mm -hmm. okay. Any message to our young generation about uh, your service and about the Korean War, and especially in the context of this mutual relationship between U.S. and Korea? Well, I'd say to the, to the younger generation, be, keep in mind that free, freedom is not free. It takes sacrifices to, to maintain and, and endure freedom. And I don't want these young people coming along to, to ever be casual about that and take it for granted. That would be a mistake. I'd be very concerned if that were the case. Have you been back to Korea? Have not been. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, sir. For your time and thank you for your service.